so next, I'm really proud that at the Carbon Newbie Summit, you know, not only are we talking about carbon, uh, we're talking about methane as well, which in the industry is starting to get a little bit of momentum. So with that, I would like to introduce Sid. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Sid. I think it's working now. Cool. Uh, from the Environmental Defense Fund, we're a pretty large environmental organization. Um, and I think, like, in the spirit of Carbon Newbie, like, one year ago, I didn't know anything about methane. And now I'm up here. So I guess, you know, you can learn really quickly and be up here talking and teaching others. So it's kind of amazing. Um, oh, making the same mistake. Uh, but moving to methane, methane or CH4 is an invisible gas that makes up natural gas that you know powers our homes. And unlike with carbon dioxide, for methane, uh, we actually hold the solutions or solutions today that are relatively cheap, fast, and easy to implement. And uh, like I'll talk about more, methane is a huge contributor to climate change. So, even though we emit a tiny fraction of methane, methane is responsible for 30% of warming to date, and most of the rest is carbon dioxide. Um, and this is because, like we heard from Olivia about GWPs, based on methane's chemical structure, um, a lot of, uh, based on its chemical structure, it's able to capture a lot more heat than carbon dioxide, and that's what we saw in her presentation. And so on a 20-year time frame, so this is different than the 100-year time frame, but on a 20-year time frame, methane's warming power is more than 82 times that of carbon dioxide. And it lasts in the atmosphere for about a decade, and that means the warming is really concentrated in the near term. And so what you need to know about methane is that every time we reduce methane, we reduce a lot of warming right away in our lifetime. About 40% of man-made methane comes from agriculture, um, mostly from natural livestock, livestock digestion processes, so like cow burps and cow farts and other animals. Um, and about another 40% comes from the fossil fuel industry, as methane is released both intentionally and unintentionally from uh, oil, natural gas, and coal. And then most of the remainder comes from waste and landfills, which are good conditions for microbes to decompose waste and release methane. So we're just gonna fly over to Texas very briefly to show you what it actually looks like out in the field. And the huge black plume that you're seeing is methane that's being released from this oil and gas facility. And let's not forget that methane is an invisible gas to the naked eye, so the only reason we can see this is because we have an infrared camera on a helicopter flying around this facility looking at this piece of equipment at this point in time. And obviously those five things don't happen all the time. So imagine just how much methane we are missing out on that we are not, like, we are not identifying, not detecting. But at the same time, we also know that a lot of the fixes to preventing methane leaks are pretty cheap and easy. Uh, it could be as simple as, you know, tightening a valve or plugging a pipe. And in fact, 75% of the oil and gas methane emissions can be eliminated with technology we have today, and half of those at no net cost. And there's basically no climate solution that exists today that has those kinds of numbers. And so obviously the question leads to, like, why aren't we doing it? Well, um, part of this is governments and companies are using estimates of their methane emissions. They're not actually out there in the field with, a, with using cameras or drones or aircraft to actually see where are the leaks, how do we stop them? And we need something that's global in scope, that has a high level of precision, that's doing this all the time. And at EDF, we do a lot of things on methane. But the coolest thing we're working on is MethaneSat, which is a satellite that's going to go up early next year. And it's going to provide that global, co global continuous coverage 
with pinpoint accuracy. So it's going to cover 80% of global oil and gas production with, um, with real-time data that will be provided free and easily accessible so that you and me and companies and governments can use that data uh, to help identify and stop leaks as soon as they happen. If there's one thing you need to know, it's that we need to cut methane now. If we want to slow down warming, we need to cut methane now. If we want to avoid the waste of gas that could be powering our homes, we need to cut methane now. And if we really want to take advantage of a cheap and easy climate solution, something on our path to a cleaner and greener world, we need to cut methane now. Thank you. Great job, sir. <laughs>